beyond what's happening with the verbiage change and the streamlining of George Costanza's wallet, you've got the question of who's actually going to be calling the plays right. offensively this year in New England. And we've said this before. It was any other coach doing this. We would be saying, this is insane. <laughs> a longtime defensive coach who's a failed head coach, not necessarily entirely his fault, hard to put the Patriot way on top of the Lions franchise, just doesn't quite fit. But Matt Patricia back after being the jack of all trades last year, he's now the offensive line coach. Joe Judge, special teams coordinator, dabbled a little bit in offense, but he was a special teams guy, right. failed former head coach of the Giants. He's now the quarterback's coach. So in week one of the preseason, both were calling the plays. It was Patricia with Brian Hoyer. It was Judge with the rookie quarterback, Bailey Zappa. Now... Going forward, we don't know who's going to call the plays. Here's Bill Belichick, Matt Patricia, and Joe Judge from yesterday talking about the current play calling situation offensively in New England. Play call, you're going through a process just like everything else on the team. What's the nature of the, that process? Is it competitive, you know, like it is for the players where you're competing for opportunity and being evaluated? No, that doesn't have anything to do with it. And how would you characterize the process? It's, we don't have time for that. <laughs> but I appreciate the question. I really do. I, I know I know how interested you are in that subject, and I'd love to be able to shed a little more light on it, but it's honestly, it's a much longer conversation. The assistant coach's job is real simple. Make the head coach happy. That's your job. He has a vision for his team. He knows what he wants his team to look like. It's our job to listen and to go out and execute the way he sees it. And that's the important thing as assistant coach. You know, you can't have you know, 20 head coaches. There's one head coach. All right, it's our job to make sure that when he speaks in a meeting, we understand what he's saying and to make sure that our players can go out there and execute within that vision. That's our job. That's my job. So as far as defined roles, whatever it may be, I come to work every day with one simple policy. Whatever he says goes, okay? I'm not the head coach here. That's one certain thing. And my job is to do whatever he says to the best of my ability and get the players playing better. I mean, honestly, it's it's just collaborative from that standpoint. You know, I mean, um, we, we follow Coach Belichick's lead. You know, I mean, it's obviously we're just I'm just trying to do my job to the best ability, whatever he asked me to do uh, on any given day. And that's the beauty of it. That's what I love. You know, it's always kind of uh, new and exciting and challenging from that standpoint. But really just, you know, we're all just working together right now, which is the great part about it. You know, you can tell that both Judge and Patricia have been head coaches because they know how to communicate effectively with right. the media. <laughs> right. And you didn't get – and I know this is kind of playing the hits around here, but it really does kind of bug me that there's this undercurrent of derision from Belichick from time to time when people are just trying to do their damn jobs. It's an obvious – question well we don't have time for that well we got time <laughs> bill we got we got nowhere to be we'd love to know what the hell's going on here i mean the idea that you've got two different guys calling the offensive plays in a preseason game of course that's going to create natural curiosity and maybe confusion as to what the hell's going to happen week one and it does invite speculation of course that he is letting the two candidates compete to see which one does a better job of calling the plays because neither guy's done it. Who's going to call the offensive plays? Well, I got two former head coaches that really aren't experts in the offensive side of the ball. Let's see how Patricia handles it, and let's see how Judge handles it. That's the obvious explanation. Yeah. If it's anything but that, then take the time and explain it to us. I mean, we've seen Belichick go down a 10-minute rabbit hole on how they used the up back in the single wing back in 1942 – he can take some time and tell us about what his plan is at the play caller position. I, I, I hear you there, Mike. <clears throat> I mean, I love Coach Bill Belichick, and he's the greatest coach in the history of sports, in, in my opinion. But uh, I, I do wish he was a little, you know, easier on the media that way. Maybe just a little bit more. Hey, you know, it, it, it's not that hard to answer that question. I, we don't need all the details, but just give us a little inkling. I hear you. I don't understand that either sometimes about him. But I'm sure he has his tactical reasons as well. He is one of those guys, and he's extremely tactical. Uh, everything's pretty thought out, and I don't think he wants to shed a light on anything in case he might say something and somebody, you know, misconstrues it some way and takes it some other direction. So I guess he just is tight-lipped when it comes to that stuff. 
Or maybe the truth happens to come out. Well, and he doesn't want the exactly. truth to come out. I think so. You're right. Maybe that's that is maybe that is. But th there's one thing, and you, you heard it there. I, I mean, not that I've been in every building in football, and the head coach is always the man in every building. But you know, it it said you know Mass General Brigham there behind them. I mean, there's there's only one general in that building. Okay, I can just tell you that. And as soon as you walk in, you know who the freaking general is. You can't walk in without going by his office and Bears Nigerian, his assistant. And, you know, they're, you feel like when you're walking by, you might be going through like a metal scanner and they're x-raying you and you're like, oh, I mean, are they, or is there some secret machine they got to tell my mood today and if I'm, what I'm bringing in the building? I mean, they're just all over every detail. And then, you know, Belichick, to, to, the, to what they're saying, it, Belichick is one of the few coaches that could coach both sides of the football. He could do it. So he's going to be, and he's already made comments, he's spent more time on that side of the ball than ever before in his life. And he's going to give them the path and the vision in which he wants to see the offense go. And that's where they're, they're different too. You know, they have long coaching meetings where he coaches the coaches and they, you know, understand his vision like they were talking about through that. So I think they're just finding their way. And who calls the plays? I think it's probably the thing that Belichick's probably least concerned about because like we talked about last week or maybe it was two weeks ago, I think Belichick's going to narrow it down for these guys to a degree where it's not going to be that hard. He's going to go, hey, on third and seven to ten, I like these ten plays. So you guys, okay, you can have the freedom of which ones you like the best and when you talk to Mac Jones or whatever, but these are the ten plays I like. Here's third and two to four. Here's the 10 plays that make sense to me. And, you know, they'll build off of that. And at some point, yes, he'll try to find the guy who has the best rhythm within calling those plays and, and having a feel for the defense. But it'll still be collaborative. He's still going to be on the sideline, Mike, with a sheet and, uh, yeah, they're, and a headset. Yeah, and they're playing and us. And a headset. They're, they're playing us. And, uh, uh, you know, every time we get in three receivers to the right, they're playing this. And then Patricia's going to write it down. And Joe Judge are going to write it down. And they're going to start to understand throughout the game. And that's why they're so great at adjustments anyway there in New England so that's kind of how I envision it see it going at least not a great impersonation of Bill Belichick but a pretty spot-on impersonation of Phil Sims impersonating <laughs> Bill Belichick that's that's kind of the that's the, what always the happens lens to me. through which all of your bits <laughs> flow here's the other thing to keep in mind too as it relates to Judge and Patricia and this whole idea of submitting to the true mass general both of those guys are working for free this year Patricia worked for free last year. I forgot about that. He's working for free this year. He's still in his Lions buyout, and every dollar he makes from the Patriots is credited to what the Lions would owe him. Same thing for Joe Judge. Remember when we saw him last year after he got fired? They had like six cases of beer and 20 pizzas, and I'm thinking Joe Judge is just going to live it up for a couple of years on the nickel of John Mara. Nope, he's working for free for Bill Belichick. And Patricia's working for free, again, for Bill Belichick. It's a free education. It's a Ph.D. plus That's in right. football. And they're getting themselves ready so they either can continue to be employed by the Patriots after their buyouts expire or they get themselves ready for a second act in coaching right. somewhere, just like Josh McDaniels now after an extended stay with the Patriots following – the way things didn't work out for him in yeah. Denver. They're workers, Let's Mike. They're, they're, let, let me ask oh, sorry, you, let me ask sorry. you this. Yeah. How does all this affect Mac Jones? That's I, really the most important aspect of this. I, I, I hear you. I, I know. Well, he's, he's definitely, you know, a, it's a different vision. You know, again, as much as I love Joe Judge and Matt Patricia, and they're, they're, to me, again, I know it didn't work out as head coaches, but, damn, they're good, head, they're good coaches to have on your staff. They can coach a lot of different things. But, but yeah, the messages are going to be a little different. Are they going to be able to coach every intricacy in the world like Josh McDaniels could? Absolutely not. I just, there's no way. I mean, that's what made Josh McDaniels special. As I've told you before, you know, I was with John Gruden, who was considered an offensive genius. I got with Josh McDaniels and I learned things where I was like, whoa, I never knew that was what you guys did. And whoa, that's how you teach it. And whoa. 
you can still run that play against this coverage. I was always kind of taught not to do it. Well, yeah, if you, you adjust this and this, you can still run it. Well, so I, I can't imagine it's going to be quite as good as Josh McDaniels right off the bat. But I think that's probably part of this streamlined process of let's let's make the, the package of plays smaller. Let's make the language smaller so there's not as many coaching points to be had out there and we can have more of a clear message in, within what we do. So that that's where New England's, you know, different, I think, than most places. And, and Mike, also, you know, you hear reports, right, like, hey, the offense doesn't look good and, you know, Mac Jones and company doesn't look as good as last year in practice and things like that. Well, uh, New England's not worried about that. You know, there was plenty of days when I was up there where they don't script for success. I think I've told you that before. Where I was on other teams where it was, hey, we want to run this play, and John Gruden would tell the defense what coverage he wants when he runs that play before we went out and practice. Uh, they, they just go, no, you adjust to the game. You adjust to it. We don't know what the defense is going to call. So we got to figure it out. And sometimes that makes practice look ugly. And, of course, then when you add in two new offensive minds and some adjustments that they're having there, uh, I'm sure it's not quite as smooth as it's been in years past. That's why it's practice. That's, That's right. That's why it's all building toward week one when they take on the Dolphins. And we really don't know what to feel about the Patriots, although there was a point last year where we were feeling like, whoa, they, they're kind of back. That ended with a thud when they got the crap kicked out of him by the Buffalo Bills in the wild card round. But let's not forget that before that game, we were feeling like the Patriots were figuring life out post Tom Brady. Now yep. they have to figure it out post Josh McDaniels. But again, with Bill Belichick, any other coach, we would be saying, this is crazy. This is a train wreck. Dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. With the Patriots, we say, yeah, you know, they'll probably, they'll probably find a way to figure all this out and make it work. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.